PCM has started uh, at around the late uh, 60s from a person called Stanford of Siski. He came up with the main concept that uh, he observed that some materials can switch their phase between a crystalline phase and an amorphous phase. And uh, about uh, 15 years ago, uh, early 2000s, uh, some memory vendors realized, started realizing uh, that eventually uh, the memory technologies basically DRAM would start facing uh, scaling challenges. So therefore they, they revisited, they started revisiting the technology. If you heat up uh, the basic uh, germanium antimony tellurite, which is the most common material, above uh, say about 600 degrees C, then the material melts. And then if you cool it rapidly, then the material freezes into the amorphous state. Now if you take the material from the amorphous state and heat it to the crystallization temperature, which is at around 200 degrees C or so, and slow it, slowly quench it, then it will uh, end up in the polycrystalline phase and therefore achieve uh, low resistivity. Uh, these materials has, have actually been used uh, for 15 years or so now in uh, optical disk technology, rewritable CDs and rewritable DVDs. Phase change memory is thought to be the first instantiation of what we call universal memory because it possesses uh, characteristics both of uh, memory, like DRAM, so it's fast, it's uh, very durable, it can be written uh, millions of times. On the other hand, it is also very scalable and we can achieve uh, storage of multiple bits per cell. Uh, therefore, it has characteristics also of flash. Uh, people think that it can be manufactured at low cost, therefore we can think of a, a DRAM-like memory, uh, characteristics of DRAM, but with uh, possibility to manufacture in very high densities. Therefore, uh, the usage uh, cases of PCM are kind of obvious. One could use it uh, to store entire databases uh, in memory and fulfill the year-long promise of uh, what we call actually in-memory processing. And that would open the way for uh, very fast processing, like online transaction processing, onli online uh, analytics processing, and so on. But at the same time, it can be used on the other end of the spectrum as, um, as an add-on to storage systems. For example, you can think of storage systems that consist of flash or hard disk drives or hybrids that could use, instead of DRAM today, could use uh, PCM to store their metadata. PCM at the same time is non-volatile, so even in the, in the event of a power loss, your data is protected. And at the same time, your uh, hot uh, writes, your hot data, can be absorbed in PCM. So what we did is we took uh, an array of 64,000 cells, which was manufactured at IBM uh, in a prototype uh, memory chip, and we first subjected it to 1 million endurance cycles. So we first uh, changed the phase between set and reset amorphous crystalline 1 million times to demonstrate also the endurance of the technology. And after that, uh, we took those cells and we stored uh, data by uh, storing actually eight levels of data, so three bits per cell. We then uh, repeatedly read the information while at the same time we applied a temperature profile which changed between room temperature, about 30 degrees C, and up to 80 degrees C. We even left the device uh, to, to, to 80 degrees C for more than a day. Uh, and then we basically read the data. So we were able to achieve very high reliability, uh, raw bit error rates uh, at around 1 times 10 to the minus 4 error rates, which are highly acceptable for uh, low redundancy error correction codes. And this was made possible by the combination of two main technologies. One, one technology was um, uh, a new metric, a new way to read the information from phase change memory cells that by its nature is not uh, so uh, susceptible to resistance drift. So it kind of achieves some certain robustness with respect to drift. The other uh, property, uh, the other uh, advance, uh, advancement is that uh, we came up with a new set of uh, coding and signal processing technologies uh, by which we basically adapt the way we read the information from the memory cells so that we are able to follow the variations of the levels as they undergo temperature changes, drift, noise, any other uh, phenomenon that would actually change the information. So by following the changes we're able to always detect 
the information with the highest degree of reliability possible. So by combining these two technologies judiciously, we were able to, as I said, demonstrate uh, that after cycling those cells for one million times, we could store information at three bits per cell and retrieve it over, over 10 days after uh, programming uh, in the presence of temperature variations up to 80 degrees C. And this actually marks the first time uh, that someone is able to store uh, TLC, so three bits per cell, in phase change memory arrays, not a single cell, and also uh, address basically all the major reliability challenges of this technology.